شكرا سيدي الرئيس Thank you, Mr. President. Clearly, Mr. President, that uh, words of the truth does make the representatives of uh, colonial powers go insane in this chamber. We see them leave the room when they hear words of truth spoken. They prove this way that they have colonial malicious intentions against my country and the people of Syria and that their diplomacy is a diplomacy of chaos, coercion and the use of force and not a diplomacy of dialogue and resolving conflict by peaceful means. Hence and after some colleagues have left the chamber. I would like to thank them because they have given me the attribute of a permanent representative on their behalf, a permanent member on their behalf. Correct, the interpreter. I thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would like to congratulate you on presiding over the work of the Council for this month at a time when the world in general and our region in particular go through major and serious challenges due to the erroneous policies of some states, including permanent members of the Security Council, as they seek to implement their own interventionist policies that contradict with the principles and purposes of the UN Charter. Mr. President, your wisdom and experience are a safety valve for the work of the Council at this critical time. Allow me, Mr. President, in this occasion to condemn the cowardly act of terrorism that uh, a Nusra Front has perpetrated against the Russian embassy in Damascus a few days ago. There are member states that voted positively for the French draft resolution, but they opposed releasing even a press statement that condemns this act. We are also sorry that the Security Council failed to adopt the draft resolution that you tabled with a view to achieving a calm and pushing the political process in Syria through differentiating between the so-called moderate armed opposition forces and the terrorist al-Nusra Front organization. Blocking the Russian draft resolution reaffirms for the hundredth time that there is no political will for those who stood against this draft resolution. They have no real political will to combat terrorism, no genuine will, and no genuine will to reach an intra-Syrian resolution of the crisis. And clearly, Mr. President, that this differentiation between the extremist terrorists and the moderate armed groups is a difficult process that very much is like the separation between uranium um, enriched uranium from enriched, unenriched uranium if there is actually uranium that is not enriched. Mr. President, I have not bothered to reflect upon the French draft resolution. It was crystal clear that it had its own objectives. This was clear not just to me, but to the Syrian people. As we recall, the 100th anniversary of the infamous Sykes-Picot Agreement. This agreement has caused continued suffering. This is a colonial agreement between France and Britain that has brought continuous suffering. They have part it, has, it has, this agreement has partitioned our peoples, looted our wealth and resources. We think that this French draft resolution reflects the nostalgia of this country to their dark colonial past and history. They were under the illusion that fueling the Syrian crisis would be a golden opportunity for them to regain a colonial power that would never be revived. The 
foreign minister of France has today practiced a policy of guardianship over the Syrian people. He spoke today of what is good for the Syrian people and what he, as a French minister, should do to help and assist the Syrian people. As if he still, he still dreams that he represents a colonial power that can hijack the right to speak on behalf of the Syrian people in this council. However, French politicians should be ashamed of what they've done to Libya and the Libyan people. As for talk of the Guernica and Spernica massacres, these two massacres were because of European competitive barbaric polities that we have absolutely no relation to, not us, not anyone else, purely European barbaric policies. As for the carnage against Syria today, is caused by, it is caused by mercenary foreign terrorists that were born in France, Britain, Germany, Italy, Norway, Spain, Belgium. These are terrorists that are manipulated by the intelligence of Western states, specialized Western intelligence forces, and also the fatwas of jihad and the Qatari and Saudi funds and the Turkish sponsorship of all this, act, all this process of aggression. Before I go into my statement, I would like to remind the French minister of what his predecessor, Rouen de Fadou, said in 2012, and I quote in French. Syrian jihadists, Siri. Syrian jihadists, Fr French jihadists are doing a good job in Syria. This is the policy of France, as expressed by the foreign minister of France at the time in 2012, Laurent Fadus. Elements and provisions of the French draft resolution has proved yet again that they have ill intentions against my country. This is the ill intention of the successive French governments that have sought since the beginning to undermine the entire Syrian state in its totality, not just simply targeting a particular government. The draft resolution clearly calls for an end of the Syrian army operations that conducts with its allies operations to defend the Syrian people and combat terrorism on behalf of all of you against Al Nusra Front, ISIL, and affiliated terrorist groups. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a given that whenever the Syrian army and its allies gain ground against the terrorist groups, namely Al Nusra Front, whenever this happens, members of the council, well-known members of the council, rush to rescue them from their inevitable inevitable fate through convening sessions or tabling draft resolutions that completely disregard the suffering of the Syrian people. It only seeks to rescue the terrorists, whether in Aleppo or other regions and cities of Syria. Mr. President, we hope that this unprecedented and tireless effort by France to push for the adoption of this draft resolution. We hope that this, like the case with the draft resolution by Russia, we hope that it would have been channeled to find a political solution for the crisis in Syria, led by Syrians without any foreign intervention or preconditions. We hoped that instead of tabling a draft resolution to impose a no-fly zone, in our own country, Syria, in our airspace, we hope that they would have imposed a moratorium on the support that the governments provide to terrorism that they export to my country, Syria. We hoped that the government of France would be able to answer the question that the Syrian people continue to ask. Is a total deal or the money of the Qatari gas 
and the arms deals with Saudi Arabia, are all of these worth the Syrian blood that was spilled? The United States, France, and Britain, for more than six years, have persistently called for one session following another. They have sponsored draft resolutions, presidential statements, press statements in the Council with one purpose, to deceive the public opinion that they are seeking to resolve the crisis in my country. At the same time, they have launched media, diplomatic, and political campaigns to falsely promote ideas, namely that what's happening in Syria is a confrontation between the so-called moderate armed opposition and government forces that they accuse of committing war crimes. They completely disregard the fact that their policies have put in jeopardy, jeopardy the lives of hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians in Syria through their continued support to the armed terrorist groups that have used civilians as human shields. In eastern Aleppo, the terrorists have turned the most important, the biggest eye care hospital in the Middle East to a base for their military operation. This is an answer to remarks by some colleagues who talked about targeting hospitals. I would like to remind you that the Security Council, since the beginning of the crisis in Syria, has held 75 official formal hearings and 97 consultations, eight meetings using the area formula. It has also adopted 17 resolutions in addition to a number of presidential and press statements on the situation in Syria. However, all this effort has not stopped the support for the world terrorism or diaspora from messing with my country, Syria. I would like to remind that the U.S. has used in this council the veto 77 times, Britain 33 times, France 19 times. And the representatives of these countries had no shame when they blocked draft resolutions that simply call for ending the Israeli occupation of our occupied lands and to bring justice to the, Syri to the Palestinian people. It is self-evident that the support programs that the U.S. continue to provide and these are also provided by regional and Arab countries that are following the paymasters in the region, all the support to the moderate armed group continue to reach the hands of ISIL and the Nasser Front. These are terrorist groups and their affiliates, of course. The Syrian people have the right, and let me say that these countries claim they seek to achieve their interests. They should ask about the logic or the mechanism that govern their approach towards Syria. The U.S. has established a program to train fighters that it has predetermined that they are moderate. And according to U.S. officials, the U.S. has spent $500 million to train 49 fighters. 500 million U.S. dollars to train 49 fighters. Most of them took the U.S. provided weapons, and the moment they reached the Syrian territory, they have joined the terrorist Anusra Front. This leaves five. We have no idea where they are now. The U.S., Saudi Arabia, Qatar has provided arms and money to the Yarmouk Martyrs Brigade in the south and al This brigade has announced allegiance to ISIL. These countries insisted that uh, the Nordin Zinki organization, it is a terrorist organization supported by Turkey, they insisted that it is moderate despite the, this organization claiming responsibility for their crimes in Aleppo, Aleppo and they have actually joined Al Nusra Front after that officially. So all of these moderate armed groups are now affiliated to ISIL.
The most recent incident is that the Sukur Jabal Zawiya Brigade, supported by the U.S., has announced its allegiance to Fath al-Sham Army, that is the new name of the terrorist and Nusra Front. I would like here to refer to 1,800 electronic messages were deleted from the in from the inbox of the former U.S. Secretary of State that included details on consignments of weapons that were transferred to armed terrorist groups in Syria from Libya through Turkey, and this is by a decision from the American administration.